Right, a few days ago I did a video where I showed um, how I actually repaired this Setra um, air rifle. It's a pump-up pneumatic air rifle, a vintage one made in the 1960s and 70s. And um, in that video I explained how I made a new valve for this um, gun. And that worked perfectly and there's no leakage at all. But when I've been using it recently, I've noticed that there's a pressure build up. So you can actually fire a shot off and without pumping it, you can actually pull back the bolt and fire it again. So what's happening is, is when the actual hammer goes forward, it's hitting the valve and it's not actually allowing enough air to actually come through to actually clear the reservoir. And this is quite a common fault with pump-up pneumatic air rifles. The modern ones have a pressure relief valve, so when you actually get to a certain pressure, air will leak out and maintain a certain pressure. This one doesn't have a pressure relief valve, and therefore if I continue to shoot this over a period of time, say if I pumped it up to seven or eight pumps, fired a shot off and then pumped it up again and continued just doing that for a, a period of shooting this one builds up so much pressure that in the end the um, hammer doesn't release the air at all and in certain instances with pump up pneumatic air rifles you can actually increase the um, hammer spring or put a stronger hammer spring in and that knocks the valve forward harder and allows more air to come out. That obviously increases the power somewhat. And if it does that, you can obviously put less pumps in to keep it within the limits. But I'm not going to do that with this one because it already has a very powerful um, hammer spring in it. I wouldn't want it to be any tighter than that to pull back. And when I took the gun apart the other day, I realised that the spring is the original spring, as was all the other parts. It even had its um, lead seal to seal the housing of the uh, valve in the air rifle. And I showed in that video that I replaced this one with a PTFE seal, which works perfectly. And since I've done that last video on this Setra rifle, I've found a brilliant website all about the Setra and the history. It's got photographs of the gun, it tells you the complete history of when it was made, plus there's a detailed breakdown drawing of all the parts. And using that exploded view of the rifle, I was able to confirm that all the parts in this Setra rifle were in their correct order. So today I'm going to do a complete strip down of the Setra rifle using the tools I've made to actually take it apart. I'm going to show all the internal parts and the way they're situated within the rifle. Give a simple explanation of how the parts work and the gun works. And hopefully find out the fault. To start with whatever you do with any pneumatic rifle is to actually check that there's no air pressure in the cylinder before taking it apart and there have been many accidents in the past where people haven't observed this rule they've gone to actually take the gun apart and the valve or the hammer or um, something like that can actually fly out under pressure and cause serious injuries so normally with the more modern um, pump-up air rifles you can actually just pull back the um, bolt like that and fire it off. But like I say with this one um, it can actually build up so much pressure in there that you can actually fire that hammer and it won't actually release the air and the gun can still be under a lot of pressure. So to take the gun out of the stock, it's just one screw on the underside here. So 
So next I put the back end of the gun on a rubber block. This is one of those sanding blocks without any sandpaper on it. They're great little tools to use. This protects the rifle metal work so it doesn't get damaged when you actually drive pins out. So now I'm going to take this um, trigger assembly out. There's one pin holding that in and I use the correct size or the correct diameter pin punch which is very important. These are great tools for working on air rifles. In fact, they're a must for working on air rifles. So now I'm going to drive that pin through. And you can see there that the back end is pushed out a bit and that's because it's under a bit of pressure from the hammer spring. You pull the trigger and then work that one out. And that's the hammer spring and the hammer spring guide. So now I'm going to do a test just to be 100% sure that there's no air left in the reservoir of the rifle. I take a scrap piece of aluminium bar, which is smaller in diameter than the actual back end of the rifle here, than the bore. I put the end of the rifle up against a block so it can't actually move forward when I push the valve assembly inside. I'm actually pushing onto the hammer which pushes the valve open when that um, spring goes forward. So I've got my welding glove on, my other hand is clear of any air exit and then I can actually push that hammer forward like that and that's opening the valve inside and now I know that there's no air left in that air rifle at all and it's safe to take down. So now I tip the hammer assembly out and it's this steel component here, flat end on the front which strikes the valve and this is where the hammer spring goes into. Right, so now I've set up my InScan endoscope to show you what it's like inside at this stage. And in my last uh, video on the Setral Rifle, I showed using this medical endoscope to actually look inside. Today I'm using my bigger version. This is the industrial quality one, but it's being sold at an affordable price. It's an excellent tool to have if you're working on air guns or any guns really. You can actually look down inside the gun and um, look at the parts, look at the condition inside the um, chambers or whatever. And now I'm going to put the camera down and show you the uh, valve area. And you can see what brilliant images this um, endoscope gives. And the great thing with this endoscope is that the fact that you can actually take excellent videos, good quality videos and photos. So I'll press and take a picture of that valve assembly for reference. And you can see in there the rest of the area in the bore here of the um, back end where the hammer slides down. It's not really badly scratched or damaged or anything. And it's in amazing condition really for such an old gun. The centre part there is the actual valve, the brass um, piece and the strikers on the end there which the hammer hits to knock the uh, valve forward and open it. The square section with the corners um, taken off that's the actual nut that holds the valve assembly in and now I've got to take that one out and that one unscrews. Right, to take the actual nut out, to pull the valve out, I made this tool up here out of a piece of 8mm mild steel bar. 
and in inches that's about 0 0.314 thou and then I just took the corners off at the end here and that's to actually go inside that nut I'll show you it when I get it out so across the corners it measures about 416 so I just took those corners off there on the end with a small file and then I drilled a bore in the end of this one which is about 0.270 and that's to actually go down over the thread and get into the nut cutout so put that one down into the socket of the nut like that and unscrew that one and you can see how nicely that actually fits that nut it's just protruding just through like that but it's the perfect fit in that square socket And then I made this slide hammer tool up here with a thread in the end there. I kept on drilling it out and increasing the size of the thread until it actually went over the thread because I had no clue what the thread size was on the back of the valve. In the end I've uh, put 6mm thread in there and I managed to actually screw that down over the um, actual brass um, valve part. And it may not be the correct size, I just wound it onto the end of the valve to pull it out and it worked okay, but um, it could be a UNF thread for all I know. So this one screws down onto that valve, just tight enough, like that. And then I can use the weight on the slide hammer to withdraw that valve. And what came out there was the valve spring, the main valve spring, the O-ring that goes on the end of the valve, and a bronze washer which goes down on another spring that's inside the um, bore here still. So that one unscrews from the end of the extractor tool. And there's the PTFE washer that I made to replace the lead one that I showed earlier. That's the valve. And if you watch my other video on the Cetra, I explained how I actually made the centre part of the valve. That's this one here. This was a rubber one and I've changed it. I made a new one and I've put a PTFE seal in that one and I lapped it into the valve housing and that one does actually work perfectly so now I'll tip the last two components out which is the non-return valve and the other spring so this is the non-return valve um, the pump pumps through onto that one that one goes onto the whole of the um, inlet valve then it's the bronze washer then it's the main valve spring and then it's the valve housing with the o-ring on the end of that one and then it's the ptfe washer on that one or the ptfe seal and then it's the square nut that I took out. So that's all the components that should be in the main reservoir of the Cetra. The non-return valve is made of brass with a rubber seal on it. And that rubber seal points forward towards the pump end of the rifle and blocks the inlet port. 
every time you pump the um, rifle this spring gives a little bit and the valve lifts off its seat and allows air to come in through the inlet port into the main reservoir. The bronze washer sits in between the two springs and the whole assembly pushes the valve closed when there's um, no air in the rifle. Plus the spring also returns the valve to the closed position after it's fired. So now just to explain how the actual valve works, obviously um, the seal seals against the front face there. The valve housing has a larger diameter bore at the front to those exit holes in the groove. There's four of those holes. So you can see there that it's larger than the spindle there. And that's to allow the air to go through that hole and out those exit holes. The bore is tighter at the back there, or a nice close fit on the um, bore. So you can see the spindle there is, there's no movement at all in that one. So the air cannot come through the back here. It can only go out through those um, exit holes through that larger diameter bore when the valve comes forward. This groove part here with the four holes sits directly over the transfer port from the main reservoir to the barrel. The transfer port is the inlet port to the barrel. When you pull back the bolt of the gun, it pulls this hammer back under spring pressure onto the sear of the trigger. When you pull the trigger, this one flies forward under spring pressure, hits the striker on the back of the valve and pushes the valve open. The air rushes into that larger diameter bore and out through those exit holes on the groove part through the transfer port on the um, inlet of the barrel and that's what fires the pellet down the barrel. And if you watch my video on the Cetra, my past video, you'll see that I actually made this part of the valve up because the rubber had hardened. I couldn't get the rubber part out. Plus it was also bent and sticking in the housing. And I tried making a rubber seal for that one and, and that one didn't work because under pressure it actually pushed out. So what I did was actually make a PTFE one which pushes down in this one. And then I put this part of the housing in the lathe so that the front was um, pointing out like that so that was in the chuck of the lathe like that and then I held the valve against the front face like that while I um, spun the chuck on low revs and that one lapped the um, PTFE in against this end face of the actual valve housing and that one works absolutely perfectly so if you do take this valve assembly out, just check the spindle there is a nice close fit at the back there, that the valve opens and closes smoothly. And obviously the seal on the front here, you'll know whether that's leaking or not and whether you need to make this part again. They're relatively easy to make. Like I say, you could actually make this um, housing and the uh, valve assembly all together on the lathe in quite a short period of time and um, I might actually make this housing again. I'm going to measure it up anyway now it's out and keep a log of that. And I can't really um, see any fault with the firing action of the gun at all. It all seems to be perfectly all right. The seal's good. So what I might do is just make this housing up and like I say, copy it exactly. But the exit ports on the centre groove here, I might open up a bit so it allows more air to come through. Plus I'm going to skim the back of the valve that I made um, on this end here that sits on the spring because I made the actual seal part here about 20 thou thicker than the original one. It's 173 there and the original one is one five one and a half 
that might be all the difference to actually making this gun work perfectly being 20 thou thicker when it's being struck by the hammer the gap here is obviously 20 thou a less opening and closing quicker when the spring pushes it back and that might be just enough to actually uh, cause the difference uh, from the actual originally made design so i think i'll try that first skim that one off and just try it put it all back together again it's very quick to put together and take apart test whether that works if that cures the problem then all good and well the only thing that I have to um, put in each time I actually screw the gun together is a new PTFE seal. If you're going to use the lead one, you'd have to make a new one of those. And you can actually make a new one of those by um, cutting a groove in the front face of a steel bar. So that it's exactly the internal diameter and the external diameter. And you can actually tip hot lead into the end of a bar like that in the groove and let it set and then you would have the lead seal but the PTFE is much better and if you make a load of these up all at once you can actually make them um, by doing the bore exactly the same diameter as the lead one and the diameter and that actually fits on the back of the um, housing like that and when it's screwed together it seals every time but because it's um, crushed when it's push together that's why you have to actually make a new one but what I do is turn a piece of PTFE bar to the actual diameter over a good length and also drill it to the uh, bore diameter to the same sort of length and then you can just part off um, 0.100 each time to make a seal and then just carefully take the burr part off of the back with a Stanley knife and that's the seal made so you can actually make loads of them, loads of them up really quickly and keep them as spares so now I'm going further down into the air rifle with my endoscope and you can actually see the reservoir um, chamber there is made up of a very thick sleeve there to actually um, take the real high pressure you can just make out the transfer port on the top here and that's where the air goes through into the barrel so it's the inlet into the barrel there it is there and then you can go down further into the actual reservoir and you can clearly see there the um, inlet valve or the inlet seat for the valve uh, from the pump chamber so that non-return valve seals on that um, lip that you can see down at the bottom there And the actual valve seat looks really good there's no damage on that one and the actual reservoir looks okay it all needs a good clean again and I shall do that next there's the transfer port there you can see that clearly now it's just the way you angle the camera so it all looks very good and the um, inlet port there from the um, pump chamber you can see there's just a small hole through that one so there's no way of actually pushing that valve out from that end 
Um, some people say that you can do that with certain pump-up rifles but you can't with this one because that hole's too small to actually insert a rod or anything to push the valve out from that end and that's why you need the extractor tool with the thread. So to finalise the strip down I'm going to take the pump out now and show you that and there's two roll pins on the end here which must be driven out. Again I put the gun on the um, foam rubber here to protect the bronze and when I actually got this gun there was quite a bit of damage around um, this area where people don't actually use the proper punches or they don't put it on a good surface like this one. So I have a specially made up punch that I made. This one fits inside the roll pin so it can't actually um, slip off when you actually bang it. And now I can drive those out. and carefully push that one out through the slot. It's quite a tight fit on mine because I put a new seal that I actually made in it. Like that. So it was quite tight to actually get the one out. But that's the gun basically stripped down. And that's the pump assembly. And that's the PTFE seal that I made there with an o-ring in and um, there's a bore on the front of this steel part here with a lip on the end and all this I did was turn the diameter to the um, groove or the um, inside bore size and then actually put a groove on the actual diameter of the PTFE and when I pushed it in it clicked home so it can't actually come out when I withdraw the pump or work the pump. And this is the original rubber seal that it had on it and this was um, quite worn and it didn't look very good in there so this one's much better. And this is the roll pins here, they're quite big ones but this is the tool that I made to actually push them out. It's got a diameter there which drops into the roll pin, maybe the other side, like that. So it's a loose fit on the inside bore of the roll pin and then it goes down to a shoulder. That way it can't slip when you actually knock them out. 
and when I took it apart in my um, previous uh, video or before I did the previous video I went round all the slots on the inside here with a small Swiss file to take any burrs off and then a bit of um, medium emery tape so there's no sharp edges on the inside of those slots and no burrs and if you read that um, web page that I was on about earlier they actually chose bronze to make these pump-up rifles because they're not susceptible to rust and sometimes with pneumatic guns you do get quite a bit of moisture inside when you pump them so now I'm going down the pump chamber end and it looks all okay there's a few light scratches on it but it still pumps up perfectly so that's excellent and I hope you can see what a useful tool this one is for this type of work and I will put a link below so you can actually have a look at the listing on this one see its excellent specifications and functions and the photos Plus you can also see its other excellent uses and I did do a um, video review of this one you can also watch that if you want to. And lastly you take this cover off the side here there's two screws to actually take the bolt action assembly out. So there's a little plate under that one so put that all together and you've got to get it into that position there so that this um, little screw spigot you can undo that one You can just get a pair of pliers on the end of that one. And loosen it off. Take the one out from the spindle of the bolt action and then that one comes right out. And I did change um, the seal on the end of here. It had um, one seal, but I actually found um, some um, BSA O-rings that fit my other rifle. I had to put two of those in there to actually make a seal up. And if you need to for any reason, you can actually take this um, hexagon um, part off here by unscrewing it with a spanner this has the thread for the stock screw to screw into to hold the stock on and inside there's a, a screw that goes down through the a hole in this um, diameter here so you have to put it in on the inside and there's a curved head which follows the curve of the um, diameter of the inside of this bore and that one goes down through and this one screws up tight against there. And when I first got this one I mistakenly uh, thought that I had to take this one off first to get the valve out. I needn't have done that. And when I put the um, valve assembly back in I had left this one out and when I tried to actually get the curved screw into position inside it's virtually impossible to do so so it's best to leave this one in if you can if it needs a bit of a tighten you can tighten it up a bit but make sure this one is back in before you go to reassemble so in my next video on the Setra I'll show you what I've done and then I'll show the reassembly of this gun